My name is Celso, and on a certain night, I was driving my old beetle back to my farm after a meeting with friends in town. I felt at peace in the tranquility of that road. I was a local farmer, accustomed to the solitude and vast open spaces surrounding my property. I had no idea what was about to happen. Suddenly, a light starts hovering over my car, a very bright light. I gripped the steering wheel and looked up while continuing to accelerate, trying to understand what was happening. It was a very bright white light that dazzled my eyes as if it were the sun itself. But even with my eyes dazzled, I could see that above me was a spacecraft. The object had a strange shape with indistinct contours, as if it had come out of a science fiction movie, descended from the heavens, and was in contact with me. My heart raced in my chest, and a sense of dread took hold of me. The spacecraft hovered, following my beetle without making a single sound, only emitting that light. Despite the fear, there was something hypnotic about that light that made me feel like I was floating in a trance-like state. Suddenly, the spacecraft began to move, gliding smoothly through the air towards me. A low hum emanated and filled my ears. I knew I shouldn't be there witnessing what seemed to be an encounter with something beyond human understanding. And I was alone on that road. But at the same time, I couldn't tear my eyes away from that surreal sight unfolding before me. Suddenly, as if I woke up from a dream, I felt an urgent impulse to flee from there. The fear had returned with full force, and I knew I needed to escape from that spacecraft before it was too late. I stepped hard on the accelerator. I didn't know if the Beetle's engine could handle it. I left behind the bright light of that spacecraft as I drove, my mind spinning with unanswered questions. What was that that had just happened? I knew I would never forget that experience, and as I arrived at my farm trembling and sweating cold, I knew that whatever it was, it was probably something benevolent, as it could have harmed me and didn't. I never saw that spacecraft again. Hello, my name is Romeo, and I'm going to tell you about the night I was awakened by a sound coming from downstairs. I was sleeping peacefully on my farm when suddenly I woke up to a noise near the kitchen. With great caution I got out of bed and tried to approach quietly. It could only be a thief. As I reached the living room door I froze. There it was, a werewolf, an imposing and fierce creature, already inside my house. At first I thought of fleeing, but if I did, surely I would make noise, the thing would notice me, and it would come after me, giving me no chance. In a foolish act I asked, Who are you? What are you doing here? My voice sounded firmer than I expected, despite the fear that overwhelmed me. 
The werewolf growled in response, showing its sharp fangs. It was obvious that an animal wouldn't answer my questions. It began to move toward me slowly, as if it were hunting me. My mind raced for a solution as I backed away, keeping my eyes fixed on that approaching predator. I needed to act fast. I ran towards the kitchen, desperately searching for something to protect myself. My hands grasped the handle of an old hunting shotgun that, in that moment of desperation, I couldn't even rationalize was there. It felt like God placing the shotgun in my hands, my heart filled with hope. Maybe I stood a chance against that monster. I loaded the shotgun and turned to face the beast. It was closer now. I aimed the gun and pulled the trigger. A deafening blast echoed through the house, followed by a howl of pain from the werewolf. But even wounded, it didn't give up. It started advancing toward me and I fired again and again and again until finally, the beast fell to the ground motionless. Silence settled in the house, broken only by the sound of my heavy breathing and my heart pounding. I had survived, but I knew that thing might still not be dead. Quickly, I grabbed a rope and tied up the beast. I hitched the rope to my truck and dragged it to the edge of the river. If that beast was unconscious, now it would drown. Without any remorse, I threw it into the river. I can't say for certain that it's dead, but I believe it is, and that it has become fish food. Good night. My name is Juninho. I've always been a simple man, accustomed to the quiet life in the countryside. When I lost my job as a caretaker on the farm due to the economic crisis that was plaguing the region, I needed to find a new source of income as quickly as possible. That's how after weeks of searching I found an advertisement in a local newspaper. A nearby farm was looking for a new caretaker and without hesitation I decided to apply. I needed the job and was willing to do anything to ensure my livelihood. I was greeted by the owner of the farm, a man of few words with a piercing gaze that seemed to read my soul. Despite the strange sensation that ran through me, the job worked out fine, and I was grateful for the opportunity to start over. The first few days on the farm were peaceful, with my work mainly consisting of taking care of the animals and keeping the property in order. However, rumors began to circulate in the neighboring farms. Animals were being found dead with bite marks and deep wounds that could not have been caused by common predators. The farmers were alarmed, and paranoia spread like wildfire. I began to notice suspicious glances being cast in my direction, as if I were responsible for the attacks. Despite my efforts to prove my innocence, the shadow of suspicion hung over me like a dark cloud. Because the attacks began shortly after I started working in the area, and to be honest, even I became confused, wondering if nothing happened to me after I fell asleep. It was then that the owner of the farm, the same man who hired me, approached me with a grim expression on his face. He mentioned the animal attacks and insinuated that I might be involved in some way. His eyes probed me with an intensity that made me shudder. 
Obviously, I denied it, but I could see the distrust in his lingering gaze. He gave me a silent warning, saying he was keeping an eye on me and that any suspicious behavior would be grounds for me to be dismissed from my job. My days on the farm became a burden, each moment laden with the pressure of the judgment of those farmers. While the attacks on the animals continued, and the tension among the farmers in the region increased, I found myself increasingly isolated. In the end, the truth about the attacks was never uncovered. Rumors about my alleged guilt slowly diminished, but the weight of suspicion never truly disappeared. Even when I left that farm in search of yet another new opportunity somewhere distant. But I suspect the beast to be the very owner of the farm who hired me, and my hiring was just a way to disguise who he really was. Good night. Anderson, and what I'm going to recount here happened in the year 2005 when a group of friends and I decided to embark on a unique adventure. A jeep trail through the dense forest surrounding a small town where we live. In total, we were five friends. We prepared our jeeps and set off into the unknown. The trail started off calmly with the headlights of the jeeps cutting through the darkness of the night, the smell of damp earth, and the sounds of tires crushing branches created an electrifying sensation. We laughed and shared stories as we faced the natural obstacles the forest presented. As we ventured deeper into the forest, my jeep, which was leading the way, got stuck in a marshy area. While I used all my experience trying to dislodge the jeep with forks for traction, my friends continued in their jeeps behind mine. While mine sank even further into the mud, the tension increased when suddenly a howl echoed through the forest. <coughs> Everyone stuck their heads out of the jeep windows, trying to understand what it was. Feeling a shiver run down our spines, the howl was followed by the sound of a branch breaking and leaves being trampled in the darkness. Something was terrified. We searched for flashlights and improvised weapons, preparing for whatever was approaching. Suddenly, a figure emerged from the shadows, revealing a humanoid with bright eyes and sharp teeth. That beast advanced toward my stuck jeep, growling and emitting a wild odor. My friends, in panic, started screaming, and the werewolf, showing its fangs, attacked my jeep, tearing apart the wheels and denting the body. Meanwhile, my friends in the other jeeps, realizing the imminent danger, desperately began to reverse. The werewolf continued to deliver strong blows to my vehicle. I was completely desperate and already preparing for the end when, by some miracle, I finally managed to dislodge the jeep, engaging reverse and accelerating away. Finally, I maneuvered and escaped even with one of the wheels damaged. When I exited the forest, my friends felt relieved that I had also managed to escape. Obviously, we decided never to return to that trail. My friends apologized for fleeing, 
but given the situation, if they had stayed, everyone would have died, and I understood that very well. Probably, I would have done the same thing. But the most important thing is that I also managed to get out of there alive. The memory of that night will remain in our memories for the rest of our lives, especially in mine. Good night. There was an isolated farm in the countryside, surrounded by vast expanses of fields and forests. The farm belonged to the Whitman family, whose roots were intertwined with the land for generations in the eyes of the local residents. The farm had a shadowy reputation, with stories of inexplicable events and supernatural visions. A group of friends, composed of Sarah, Jake, and Emily, decided to spend a weekend at that abandoned farm, drawn by curiosity in the thrill of the unknown, ignoring the whispers of caution from the town's residents. The three friends set out towards the farm at twilight, as the sunlight bid farewell, leaving behind a deep darkness. Upon reaching the farm, they were greeted by a heavy atmosphere and a disturbing silence. The house, shrouded in shadows, seemed to watch them as they approached. Ignoring the feeling, they decided to explore the farm grounds before nightfall. As they roamed the fields, the tall vegetation whispered in the wind, as if the laments of the past echoed through the corridors of time. They reached a barn where old agricultural tools were scattered on the ground. With each step, the creaking of the floor heightened the tension in the air. As night settled in, the group decided to return to the main house. A chilly breeze made the windows and doors creak, creating a disconcerting symphony inside. With Trilu's lanterns, they began to hear distant murmurs, as if ancient voices whispered unsettling secrets. Sarah, the boldest of the group, suggested they tell horror stories to intensify the experience. Seated in the dark living room, illuminated only by the dancing flames of an ancient fireplace, Jake began to tell the story of an ancient curse that plagued the Whitman farm. A curse that manifested every full moon night. As the words filled the air, a distant sound of dragging footsteps echoed down the corridor. The friends exchanged glances, feeling a chill down their spines but dismissing the sound. Emily continued the story, speaking of shadows moving in the fields and whispers echoing on the walls. Suddenly, the lights began to flicker, and the room was plunged into darkness for a moment. When the lights came back on, 
a pale and spectral figure briefly appeared before them. Screams echoed in the room, but the figure disappeared as quickly as it had appeared. Determined to uncover the truth behind the supernatural events, the friends decided to explore the farm in the darkness of the night. Armed with lanterns and on edge, they advanced through dark corridors and dusty rooms. Murmurs and distant laughter haunted them at every step. Ao chegaram ao pareo, onde a escuradeo era ainda mais densa, de pararem se com uma sala secreta que continha artefatos antigos e fotos despotadas. As fotos iram de jaracos passadas. Uma voz na escuradeo, revelando a historia trágica da familia Whitman e a maldicao que os atormentava a o longo de noite. Experiencias inexplicavis continuaram a sombrar os amigos, desde sombras inquietantes eight visos de rostos pallidos nas janelas. Percebendo que a fazenda era um portal para o sobrenatural, os amigos decidiram partir antes que a escuradeo de noite se tornas insuportable. A medida que se afastavam da fazenda, os amigos sentiam como se tivessem escapado por palco de algo mais sinistro. A fazenda Whitman, Com sus segredos enterados e historias neo contadas, permanisu como uma cicatriz na memoria dos tres amigos, asombrando os por muitas noites de lua caia. Boa noite. I'll tell it as if it were him. The story I'm going to tell happened in 1993 with my father in the city of Bucha Rio Grande do Sul. We currently live in Portugal. My father and his friend called Afonso when they were younger, around 14 years old. He liked to go and bathe in the marshes they had in the region and fish. But he always talked about an old black man who they were shot at because he didn't like them fishing or bathing in the place because of the sound sounded like a 12, but it always fired to scare them, so Afonso gave them the idea to go fishing at night. Probably at night he won't wake up for anything. The old man is a heavy sleeper. My father agreed so they waited a few days and went at night. They arrived at the place. My stuck up father took some cigarettes from my grandfather. His father made him look more like a man. The old people didn't even know he had left. They met near a coal mine to go to the place where they were going to fish. Arriving at the place everything was arranged the silence of the night everything was peaceful the moon was shining allowing us to see the old man's house in the distance and the countryside around it everything was serene the good thing was that it was peaceful my father said what a good idea you had afonso afonso said i didn't say that okay Comer, my father lit a cigarette and gave afonso another so they could relax and wait for the line to run. After it was ready, a few minutes passed. My father noticed movement at the old man's house, which was around 300 meters away from them, and said to Afonso, Afonso, look there, look there, I think it's the old man. Afonso then said, put out the cigarette, he could see the lit end of it from his house. They remained quiet. 
watching but they noticed something strange the old man was just turning around of the house. Until my father says something is wrong Afonso, my father said pay close attention. It looks like the old man's legs are broken and the way he walks is very strange. Afonso I say it's true so they've gotten their eyes used to the night looking closely they noticed more details they saw that it wasn't the old man but a large animal that was surrounding the old man's house so they dropped everything and climbed a tree afraid to run and that thing they noticed first Afonso went up then my father the Afonso said it can't be true is that what I'm thinking my father then said I think it's Afonso he's a werewolf if that thing gets in there it will kill the old man they were afraid to shout and wake the old man up so he could pay attention that thing there but what if he came to where they were and we caught that thing from up here bad father scared climbed a few more branches until he slipped and fell on his back and looked at the thing Afonso filled his eyes with tears and he said he's coming. My father couldn't breathe properly. He couldn't scream. He suffered in silence with the impact. Afonso in desperation jumped to try to help my father without thinking he had no idea what to do. Those things came to them. That thing started smelling my father and Afonso on his knees didn't know what to do until that thing grabbed my father by the feet and pulled him, wanting to take him to the woods. Afonso picked up the branch that had broken and tried to hit the thing that let go of my father and jumped on him, fearing the end. He didn't react until he hears the sound of a gunshot that then gave a howl and got off Afonso. When Afonso was the old man, who was next to my father trying to help with a twelve pointing at that thing, the werewolf overcome with rage he went towards the old man who shot him again and he fell down. The old man, now without a bullet, picked up my father and Afonso took him to his house. They locked the door tightly, so my father already recovered from the fall. I wonder if you killed that thing. The old man replied, I believe I just delayed him. This beast has been prowling around this region lately. They soon heard some strong galloping footsteps, the old man said. Get something to defend yourself. Then those things threw themselves against the door, which sustained the impact. Then the thing came back around the house and found a gap through the kitchen window. That thing ended up with half its body inside the house, kicking the air and chattering its teeth with the kitchen light already on. You could see the terror that was that thing from hell. The old man tried to find some 12 ammo and couldn't find it, but gave him an old machete, which he used to hit that thing. He decided not to go in there because he knew he was going to be attacked by the machete, so he left and the old man closed the window and reinforced it with a wooden lock across it. It was silent again. My father and Afonso, terrified by the scene, they didn't know what to do if they entered that old wooden house. They soon heard footsteps, but it seemed like it was moving. Away, really I was there. My father and Afonso spent the rest of the night there with the old man who took them to town in the morning so they thanked him and apologized for bothering him around the lake. This is the story. If you want to add and correct it in your own way, feel free. Hugs. <laughs>